Welcome everyone to another I had no idea. Today I'm going to give you a quick review of the newest American tank destroyer which is very good and which I also very do not like. <laughs> not because it's a bad tank but because it's just such a boring game style. Let me take you to the game so I can tell you why. So, the XM66F, what can I tell you about it? I can tell you that it really needs a turbocharger. Uh, ideally, you'd want a bounty turbocharger so it works like it's in the correct slot. Uh, what else I can tell you is that the gun is accurate, uh, it's reliable, uh, it's surprisingly reliable really for the alpha that the tank has, and that it can bounce but doesn't have really strong armor. So, what we got is sluggish, cooldown, but no armor really with accurate gun and, well, some DPM and limited turret rotation, which you are going to see very fast. I go to my typical uh, first impressions uh, position, so I take... I want to take a shot at the enemy crossing, but uh, our, our IS-3 made sure that this is not happening. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to uh, shoot at the weak spot of Astron Rex, which is of a size of a moon. Unfortunately, do not connect this one, but you're going to see a highlight of how good this gun is uh, in this battle uh, quite a lot. So those two shells, uh, they did not connect, but they were not far off. So can't complain really yet. But so why I don't like this tank? It's just another cool down tank and this one has very low amount of hit points and it's also not very fast. <laughs> not my cup of tea. I can see why people would like this tank. Uh, it's quite an easy game uh, style uh, to apply so you can have very good results in this tank uh, without being very good. So how I would assume this is going is low skill ceiling. Uh, but high skill floor, if that makes sense. So the base performance of this tank is good, as you can see, with good penetration on your standard shells. Uh, you can do quite a lot of damage and make a lot of credits as well, uh, if you decide to opt into the loot box uh, thing, which uh, I'm not exactly sure if it's a good idea for everyone, but hey, whatever floats your boat. As you can see, accurate gun. As for the tactic and the map, you can see that I keep um, a watchful eye on my left side, so there's a reason why I was dropping down every time I was firing. It's because I wanted to um, spot enemies so they don't surprise us. At the same time, I know that if I spot them e early on, before they get to us, they will get spooked and they will fall back. At least that was my assumption and it did work. So I spotted the BZ, he hesitated and now he has fallen back. So. It keep, keeps both of my flanks um, available to me. Uh, good penetration on the upper plate uh, with standard ammunition. As I said, uh, I think 230 something uh, base penetration is a very decent. I got a little unlucky with the suspension action on the uh, Patriot because as it slowed down, his lower plate uh, lowered. And as you can see, we've just traded uh, into each other's weak spot. So I hit his weak spot and he hits mine. My Eiffel Alpha again, the damage uh, is higher, so I win. <laughs> uh, obviously, he has a higher rate of fire, but because I dictate the engagement pace, I will always win. So I do that again. I slow down. I aim as much as I can. I use the Aslane's uh, reticle mod uh, to, to know what is my maximum accuracy. That's why you always see the small circle uh, when I play the game. And this is how I calculate my moves. So I do not wait for a 100% aim, just good enough, because I know <laughs> that the BZ is really hungry for some damage here. I don't blame him. Uh, he's honestly doing a good, good play. I'm out of standard ammunition now, so I can pr probably contest the BZ turret, maybe? Uh, we're not going to have a chance to uh, check this out, but I think that is a possibility. So, another good shot on the T29, uh, over-angled a little on his end, so my APCR easily goes through tier 7. Honestly, I don't think there are many tier 7 tanks uh, which we wouldn't be able to penetrate with this gun. Overall, the platform is boring, uh, it's limiting because of the uh, limited turret rotation, but the gun, the gun is really good. So 
if you don't mind a slower gameplay, this is a very good vehicle. Although it does have low amount of hit points, so the carry potential is uh, is a little uh, losing uh, when it comes to hit points. Hit points are crazy important in World of Tanks. So you can't really justify using any funky e equipment. You have to stick to what you have uh, on your basic loadout because all of those pieces are mandatory. Now, I take an opportunistic shot here. Um, EZ misses, I bounce, but uh, IS-3 that uh, knocked us earlier comes to the rescue and we finish off Patriot. Uh, but as you've seen, uh, I guess something to highlight. I got hit twice in this game and twice my armor rack went, so not very good news here. I am not uh, a big repair kit user, so I always use small repair kit and small um, med kits pretty much 100% of the time, apart from the mouse, which I don't play anyway, uh, but this is how I approach this game. This is going to be as good as it gets in a short uh, span that I had to make this video. <sighs> I honestly don't think I'll be playing this tank a lot. Uh, it has a potential, yes. Uh, I'm using coated optics, so I was able to uh, spot this um, SMV, and uh, then uh, Oni is going to uh, leave him a little uh, surprise. Come on, I know you can do this, Oni. I should, I miss, but Oni does not. <laughs> so, a little bit of assistance here. Uh, I think the setup I have right here, right now, is what I am going to stick with. It's probably not for everyone. I know that if you play your, uh, maybe instead of coated optics, use hardening to have more hit points, but then you are blind as like a bat. It's just not, not, it doesn't fit my playstyle, you know? And I don't really see myself uh, playing it. It's just not my cup of tea. And third time I got hit and third time my ammo rack went. Can you imagine that? And also at the same time I used my intuition so I couldn't shoot back. Uh, that's the highlight, and that's what I think about tank. It is uh, not reliable when it comes to the armor department. It is reliable when it comes to the gun. The gun is phenomenal, really good. And uh, it's just a little bit boring. So what we have here is a tricky situation. Of course, it's a good projector player. There's always one. And that, speaking of projector, the biggest problem that uh, shows here is that this is a tier 8 TD. There are so many other tier 8 premium tanks that I would play before I pick this one. Knowing well that I have such a large variety of uh, premium tanks on tier 8, why would I pick this one in my situation? I get the credits, so I don't mind um, shooting gold. This one doesn't need gold, so it makes a lot of credits, but I don't need credits. It's not exciting. It's just, you know, go to the ridge line, lower your gun because it has great gun depression, uh, hit enemies reliably, and that's pretty much it. That's the gameplay. It's so boring. Honestly, I am, uh, maybe, call me a thrill seek seeker. I want my game to be not just good, but also fun. So I, I had an, uh, a discussion with, um, a subscriber on another video that the tiger mouse is good because it can work well anything can work well the problem i'm facing here is that this tank might be good but it's not fun so i'm not looking for just performance in a tank i'm looking for fun factor this is a performing vehicle that is not fun to me the same applies to the tiger mouse I know the Tiger Mouse can work, especially if it's matched down, uh, but so can other things. Uh, just uh, just in uh, TD department, you get the Scorpion, you get the SU-130, way more special vehicles. One has extreme alpha, the other one has m mobility, then you have the, uh, the TVP, insane DPM, <laughs> it's, and also accurate. I don't see the reason. Uh, to play this tank. This is the problem of it. It's not a bad one. If you manage to get this one, especially in a free loot box, you got yourself a credit maker. This is what I see this being. Uh, that's my five cents. Let me take you to the garage so you can see how much uh, you can make. If you have credit boosters, Christmas bonus, 
and you're playing with the stank uh, using, let's say, half and half AP and APCR. And this is the garage, first class, three and a half thousand damage with some assistance. Uh, the battle itself, 122,000 credits, then reserve 61. I just don't feel this tank really. As you can see, good ammunition choices, 400 alpha, although we did roll uh, a few times low in this battle. Uh, but hear me out, 1,300 hit points and see, 466 meter view range. 50 of them through optics. Can you imagine playing it without optics? You'd be really, really reliant on your own team. And do you want to rely on your team? I certainly don't. So uh, I guess there is no discussion because you can't uh, pick this tank. You either get it or not. But if you do, you got yourself a good credit maker. And if you didn't, trust me, there is nothing to worry about. You are not missing anything really special. Let's have a discussion in the comments. Uh, did you get it? Do you like this kind of gameplay? How do you play um, your tier 8 TDs? Because honestly, I'd rather have something that is more fun focused. Let's see uh, what you think and I'll see you in the comments. Thank you for watching today's video. If you like this one, I'm sure you'll like one of these two as well. And if you've already seen them all, stay tuned for another one. We always do our best to make sure that we release at least four videos every month, so there's always something to look out for. In the meantime, I'll see you on the battlefield.